Oh, <laughs> hello there. I was just reading a brief comic, which, oh, would you look at that, is titled Hawkeye, just like the latest Marvel series. Now, you may be wondering, Sasha, why are you wearing those glasses? And listen, I have been thinking to myself, how great would it be if someone could explain to me what elements from the show have been directly translated from the comments? Well, <laughs> folks, you are in luck because I have read this comic, I have tabbed it, and I am ready to explain to you what the first three episodes have in common with the Matt Fraction and David Adja comics. Let's hop into this. The very first thing that we have is this page, which is in the very first issue of the Matt Fraction comic run of Hawkeye. And this is when Hawkeye runs into Pizza Dog. So in this, Clint is walking down the street and he runs past the tracksuit mafia and he runs into Lucky, the pizza dog, and offers him a slice of pizza. And that is extremely reminiscent of when Kate takes Lucky back to her apartment in episode one and offers him the pizza, realize he likes pizza, and thus the name Pizza Dog. Now, the one thing that the comics haven't necessarily picked up on is the fact that Lucky used to be owned by the tracksuit mafia. There's a little bit of an insinuation that Lucky goes after one of the tracksuit mafia guys in the very first episode, kind of biting on his leg. And that could be interpreted to be like going back after people who treated him badly, but that's a little bit more of a subtle reference. Then also in this first same issue, we have Lucky being almost hit by a car. Now in this comic book run, he actually does get hit by the car and is beaten up by the tracksuit mafia and that is why he loses the eye that he does. In the show, obviously from the outset of meeting him, he is one eye down and looking cute, permanently winking and absolutely adorable. But I did think that him running into oncoming traffic is extremely similar to when Kate saves him in the very first episode. So again, some of these elements and these comic frames just feel very reminiscent or almost like storyboards of what they wanted to happen in the first episode. Now, obviously in episode one, we have the attempted robbery by the tracksuit mafia of the black market auction. In the Matt Fraction run, there isn't specifically that scene, but there is a scene where Kate and Clint go to a performance. The basic premise of this is that a bunch of rich people have been brought to a kind of circus hypnotist show so that their goods can be stolen and there can kind of be massive fraud that's going on. This is very reminiscent to me of the black market auction, especially in the sense that our good friend, Jack Duquesne, swordsman himself, is present and kind of aware of what's going on and sort of running the whole operation, being a little secretive. Another great kind of overarching theme, there is one issue of the comics that actually does take place at Christmas time. And so there's a lot of really fun panels with Clint wearing a Santa hat, dealing with the tracksuits in the snow, and there is even a scene where the tracksuits capture Clint and take him to a warehouse, much like what we see in episode two and then is explored further in episode three. So that is a really fun thing that I enjoy about the comics is they've just, they've taken these elements and repurposed them in really fun ways that I just love getting to see unfold on screen. Another great reference in episode two to this first issue is when Clint calls Lucky or Pizza Dog not his dog, which is exactly what Kate says when Clint comes by and asks, do you have a dog? And she's like, it's not my dog. And that's a very direct callback to this. Another great frame that links back to episode two is when Kate and Clint are hanging out in the apartment. I just think some of the frames from the apartment are really cool how that at least aesthetic has been applied to Kate's apartment. Obviously it's not perfect and in these comics, we don't get a perfect layout as to what the apartment specifically looks like, but when they are doing target practice, there's a lot of exposed brick and kind of maybe a more rundown apartment that Clinton lives in. And I think that's a really, really fun reference to her like target that she set up in her own apartment where she can shoot and practice her archery skills anytime she wants. And so that's just a little bit of an Easter egg. Again, nothing specific, but just sort of kind of reminiscent things that I think are really great. Another great thing that is truly an Easter egg is the character of Grills in episode two, when Clint has to go to the LARPers competition and he battles the guy for the Ronin suit and afterwards he introduces himself as Grills. This is an Easter egg to this comic as well. There is a character named Grills who is a tenant at the apartment building that Clint lives in 
and he is always grilling that's why he's called grills he's just always barbecuing something on the roof and hosting parties for the other tenants of the building but i think it's kind of a really just nice nod to those who have read the comics because he's not necessarily a significant character he's just a recurring background character in a lot of these comics from matt fraction and david aja that i think is just really fun that they've been able to introduce that into the show somehow then in the most recent episode of Hawkeye, we have the reference to the 72 Challenger, which might just sort of be like, why is there a 72 Challenger? Clint's just like, we're not going to wreck it. And then there's sort of the joke later about how, oh, it gets wrecked anyways. This is actually a direct reference to the comics because one of Clint's lady friends, as we'll put it, has a 72 Challenger that ends up being Kate and Clint's kind of getaway car when the tracksuits start to track them down. So here we have the 72 Challenger. Now obviously in the show they take the other car and this is Echo's car but it's sort of just a really fun reference that they have basically the exact same car and a lot of the color scheme of these panels is sort of directly translated to episode three with the other car being brown sort of just be through the streets also in this scene is when there's the introduction of trick arrows to the comics and they're all delineated as what the type of arrow that they are whereas obviously that becomes the joke that kate is frustrated she can't use any of the arrows because she doesn't know what they are and clint obviously does want her to use more dangerous ones so i think that's another really great reference that the show has been able to adapt finally and just because this comes later in this comic but there's nothing directly that i have seen so far been adapted this is your one look at kazi we have of course yet to see him in sort of his armor but i do find that again maybe it could be a stretch but he has a single teardrop running down his face as part of his clown makeup and i have noticed that kazi has a very distinct cut in the very middle of his forehead on his face that could almost really stretching it call it a teardrop so again a little bit of foreshadowing there about his character and i'm sure we're gonna get more backstory on him later but that is what we have right now so that guys is what i could find from the comics by no means again am i trying to say that the show is unoriginal and steals directly all the things from this comic book i just think it's fun to assume maybe how they looked at this original text and then decided to adapt it in the show that's just the first three episodes there are three more episodes glorious episodes that we are awaiting to see. I will definitely be doing these comic book comparisons for the next three episodes when they do all come out. Please comment down below and let me know what you're most excited to see in the rest of Hawkeye. I can't believe we're already halfway through it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and do not forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my Hawkeye videos as well as my other TV, movie, and entertainment reviews and recaps because that's what we do on this channel and I'm sure you would enjoy it. Have an absolutely amazing day and I will see you in my very next video. Bye y'all.